Today we're going to learn how to install a heat pump, a standard one, without easy quick connects. So this is not a Mr. Cool and it's not an EG4. So that means it requires a vacuum pump and some gauges. But if you know how to do it, you can do it quickly and these cost a lot less. And the cost savings can be substantial. This unit is only $788. If you were to use the Quick Connect systems, it would be $1,500 to $1,800. So you're saving a ton of money by using one of the standard ones. And if you have the right tools, it's very easy to do. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now when it arrives in the mail, you're gonna get two boxes. The one on top that's smaller is the indoor unit. The one on bottom that is larger and heavier is the outdoor unit. So first we're gonna install the indoor unit. And when you open the box, you're gonna get a cardboard template. This is very useful when mounting the unit so you know exactly where to cut the hole. The hole in your wall is the most important and difficult part of this project. Everything else is dead simple. And these are some leveling pads and this is for the outdoor unit. So we'll use these later. And then it comes with a cable that connects the indoor unit to the outdoor unit through the hole that we're gonna drill. And this is the drain hose. This uses all the water collected by your indoor unit and expels it outside. These are some random installation tools and accessories, remote control mount, and now the head unit. So we're gonna carefully lift this out of the box. Now on the back of the unit, you're gonna to have to remove this metal plate. This is what we're gonna to use to attach this indoor unit to our wall. And we're gonna use this template to mount this on our wall and then drill our hole. And this is the high and low pressure lines and the drain hose. Now for this installation, these pipes need to be facing up perpendicular to the indoor unit. And to do that, you need to support the pipes down here and slowly move them until they are perpendicular. But there's lots of configurations with these pipes, so read the manual first to see what you can do. But for most people, if you're drilling the hole with the template, this is how you want them. And the drain hose is gonna go through the hole as well, so we're gonna connect these together later. But first, we need to install the mounting plate and drill our hole. And this installation is in my garage and I want to do it above the door, but the lines are going to come out of this hole, so I can't install it right here. I have to move it over and make sure that that hole is not over any studs or water pipes. Because this is a door, there's going to be a stud right there. So I have to move it over just a little bit and then raise it up so then I can access the two clips on the bottom of the unit. And the stud is right here and another stud is over here. So we're gonna put the hole right here. So right about there, I'm gonna make it level. I like to hold it in place with a screw. Now while keeping this level, we're gonna mark where we need to put our screws for the mounting plate and the hole, the cutting hole. So there's a stud right here, but there is no stud over here. So we're gonna have to use some drywall anchors and these are the ones I use. Just make sure they're in the right location so that this thing is level, that is crucial. After this plate is mounted, we can drill our hole. This is gonna be a large hole and it's gonna be at an angle. Please read the manual of your mini split to know what size hole you need and what inclination you need so that the drain hose can drain the water out of the indoor unit. This is the most crucial step. Also, ensure that there are no water pipes, studs, or electrical lines where you are cutting this hole. And we need to move this insulation out of the way so we can drill all the way to the other side. You might wanna break it up and then push it really far so it doesn't get in the way of drilling. And there are no water pipes and there is no electrical, so we are still good to go. I can feel the heat coming from the outside. It's like 115 degrees outside right now. And this looks pretty good. We've got the proper angle so it can drain and it's in the proper position. Now, before we mount this on the wall, we need to connect the wires and then connect everything to one piece that we're gonna shove through that hole. 
And this is the terminal block. So I'm gonna run the wires through this hole and then connect them right here. Make sure there's a good connection with lots of surface area and the insulation is not on the terminal. Now we can close it up. Oh, I forgot this cover. I'll put that on later. Next, connect the drain hose until it clicks. And for extra protection, not from leaks, but just so that it doesn't get yanked out, I like to add some tape. Now, after installing about six of these, I've noticed that the install goes a lot smoother if you combine these with some electrical tape so you can push it through the hole that you drilled out. If not, you're gonna have a bad time. So we're gonna wrap this up with tape and then we're gonna push it through the hole. Especially over here. This is the spot that gets me every time. So I'm gonna wrap this whole thing up. When you push this through the hole, you're standing on a ladder. So you want this to go as smoothly as possible. And we're gonna remove this in a second, but this will make the installation a lot easier. So first the electrical wires go in, next the drain hose, and now the unit. So I'm gonna lift it up on this ladder and push it through the hole. All right, we're looking good. Here we go. Perfect. That was awesome. Oh, we have to put that cover back on. And that's all you need to do for the indoor unit. Now we can go outside and install the outdoor unit. Now on this side, you wanna bend these pipes nice and slow with two hands. And that will ensure that you won't kink it right up here. And then I added a plastic cover up here so that the bugs will not go in, but you need to use gap sealer and also the putty that comes with the heat pump and shove it inside this hole and make sure it's sealed nice and tight. Next, I remove the tape so that we can work on these two pipes right here. These two connection points are gonna connect to the line set, but to use the line set, you need to roll it out on the ground carefully. So again, you do not cause any kinks. Now that the line set is rolled out, we can remove these plastic covers and hand connect them to these two connections. Make sure they're nice and straight at the very end where we're gonna do the connecting. Do not use tools, use your hands. Now that these are hand tight, we can use a torque wrench and a special tool that I'm gonna link below so that you can torque these to the proper spec. And these are the tools. You connect these to a torque wrench and then you can tighten these down to the proper spec. If you don't do that, it will probably leak. Or you can purchase one of these. This is an HVAC specific torque wrench. And the torque spec is in the manual. So please read the manual and do this right, unless it will leak. That's perfect. All right, this one's torqued. Now we do the second one. All right, that one's good too. Now I connected the other side of the line set and I torqued them to the proper spec. And then this is the cable that connects to the indoor unit. And there's a one, two, and a three in a ground. And then this is an extension cord that goes to 120 volts. So we have a line, neutral, and a ground. Now the next step is evacuating these lines. We're gonna use a vacuum pump to take out the moisture and all of the other gases that are inside this line set in the inside unit. Now the first thing you need is a vacuum pump. I bought this at Harbor Freight, but you can also buy these online. They're about $100. When you first get it, you need to add oil to this level right here. Next, you're gonna need a manifold gauge set. These are about $50 to $75, and I'll have a link below for what I recommend. This one was from Harbor Freight, and it's super easy to use and very cheap. And the last thing you need for this is an adapter. This allows you to connect this manifold gauge set to the condenser at the service port right here. If you don't have this adapter, you won't be able to use these tools with your mini split. Now this setup is pretty easy. We're only using the low pressure side. So connect the blue hose to the low pressure side and then connect the yellow hose to the center connector and make sure they're nice and tight. And at the end of the blue hose, connect your adapter and then we're gonna connect the yellow hose to the vacuum pump. And make sure it's nice and tight. We're gonna put our gauges right here. Now we're gonna remove these protective caps. Now we have a two-way valve and a three-way valve. This right here is the service port. These two down here are for opening up the refrigerant inside of this unit. Do not touch these until we are done vacuuming the lines. So first we're gonna attach this adapter to the service port. Make sure everything's nice and tight. 
Now before we turn on this vacuum pump, we need to open up the valve on the low pressure side. We're gonna loosen that up all the way. Now when I turn this vacuum pump on, it will evacuate the moisture and the gases in this line, and there should be some steam or vapor coming out right here. So let's turn this thing on. And look at that. Perfect. And now after about 10 seconds, the vapor stopped. Now we have a vacuum on the line set, so we're gonna look over at the gauges and see what's going on. And this is what you wanna see. Previously, it was at zero, but now that it's under a vacuum, it's at negative 30. And we wanna hold this for about 15 minutes. So it's been a solid 15 minutes, and now it's time for the moment of truth. We're going to close this valve on the low pressure side, and then we're going to turn off the vacuum pump and we're gonna see if the line set can hold this vacuum. If it can't, and this rises to zero, that means we have a leak in the system. But if it stays at negative 30, then we're good to go. That means that the vacuum is holding and there's no error going into the line set. But to ensure that there's no leaks, we're gonna hold this vacuum for a few minutes. If it rises to zero, then we need to check our connections. If it stays at negative 30, then we're good to go. And check that out, after a few minutes, it's not leaking. We are still holding a very good vacuum. Now we can move on to the next step. Now for the next step, we wanna put a positive pressure on the line set so we can safely remove this connector right here. Because if I were to remove it right now, there's a possibility of air and moisture going in for just a quick second and that would mess up our whole vacuum. And all you need for this step is an Allen wrench. But first, we have a two-way valve for high pressure on the bottom and we're gonna open it a quarter of a turn for five seconds. One two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna close it nice and easy. Now we're gonna look at our gauge. Now we're at a positive pressure, it's above zero. So now we can safely remove this connection to the service port. And it is scary for beginners because gas will come out while you're doing this. But you just have to commit and keep unscrewing it. And wear gloves if you have them. Just like that. And then put the cap back on the service port. Now we can safely open up these valves and release the refrigerant into the line set. We're gonna start with the high pressure valve first and go nice and slow. Now you can open it all the way, but when it stops, do not go any further. Right there. And then put the cap back on and then open the low pressure side until it stops. And there we go, the refrigerant is in the lines. We have a closed system. Now we can safely give this unit power and turn on the compressor. This will increase the pressure and then we can check for leaks. So I'm gonna flip on the switch and give this thing some power. And here's the remote control and it's on. Now we're gonna put it into turbo mode and then lower the temperature as much as possible. And we have cold air, this is fantastic. And look at that, you can hear the compressor running and the fan just turned on. Now we have a higher pressure on these lines, so we're gonna use this leak detector spray that you can buy on Amazon pretty cheap. We're gonna spray it over all of the connections that we made. And that looks good. We have no bubbles. Even a small leak will cause tons of bubbles with this leak detector spray. We're also gonna spray down these connections and there are no bubbles, so we're doing pretty good. Now everything is looking good, but I like to run it for another 15 minutes or so and then check for leaks one more time. And then we can cover this all up and finish the installation. Now if it was leaking, I would try tightening it again with the torque wrench. If that doesn't work, I would try nylog. And if that doesn't work, I would try to redo this fitting and get a flare tool. Or get a professional. If you're freaking out and everything's not making any sense, just hire a professional to do this final step. They can actually evacuate the lines and everything, typically for a smaller fee. Now the next step is leveling and securing this outdoor unit. So it comes with these rubber pads and I use them to level it perfectly. Now I just need to add some concrete anchors. And typically I use tap cons. They're very easy and they work great for this application.
Perfect. So it's level and it's secure. The final step is using this UV tape to wrap the line set. It should only take a few minutes. And it is over 115 degrees today. It's gonna hit like 118. So it's pretty hot. That's why we wear long sleeves so we don't get burned. And if you think this is ugly, you can add plastic covers sold by these companies and it makes it look really good. No one's on this side of the house, so I really don't care. There's almost enough tape. It barely made it. Technically, this new stuff is UV resistant, so you don't have to cover it, but I prefer to. Now to secure this end, you want to tape it down with some strong weatherproof tape. There we go. So there's a lot of steps, but they're very easy. I think most people could do it if they take their time and read the instruction manual. Keep in mind each mini split is different, the hole is different, the size of the fittings is different, so read the manual. If you take your time, you'll be fine. These are very simple. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Now this is expensive, but it's very nice, especially if you're installing lots of mini splits. This is an HVAC specific torque wrench. And you can use this on gas fittings and all sorts of other cool stuff. Also, you guys should know about Nylog Blue. This product will prevent leaks and it will form a gasket and seal the threads on these fittings. And pretty much every professional HVAC technician I know uses this stuff. It does not dry, it stays nice and wet, and it forms a perfect seal right here where it needs it. We're gonna add some nylon to these threads and the mating surface. Also inspect it and make sure it's nice and flush and they did a good job at the factory. And then I like to wiggle it and then try to tighten it with my hand some more and then bend the pipe down a little bit and that one's good. Now this step is optional, but it will clean up your install. If you have excess line set, instead of having it coiled next to the unit, you can easily cut it if you have the right tools. So first we need a pipe cutter and then we need a flare tool to make a flare so that we can use this fitting with these connections right here. So first you need to figure out how much you need. It's nice to have a little excess because you can't ever uncut it. Right about there. This is some thick insulation, wow. Just like that. And that one does not look as good as the first one, so I actually have a deburring tool. And this is a deburring tool. That looks good now. I just don't want any of those metal shavings going into the system. Now you need to remove this nut. For this one, we need a 3 8 You just stick this tool on here and then tighten it down. Just make sure you have a good cut to start with unless it will not turn out good. And there we have a flare. Looks good. Now one more thing to finish up this video. This is a Pioneer and it costs a little under $800. But while making this video, I found another air conditioner that is exactly the same as this one. It has the same installation components, it has the same outdoor unit, and everything else is the same, but it's actually cheaper. And this is the unit right here. It's by Della. But I was so surprised because when I opened the box, it had the same template, it had the same leveling feet, even the outside unit everything is the same as the pioneer but the pioneer costs more money these are super cheap this thing was like 650 dollars or something and yeah i'm pretty impressed also this actually has one feature that the pioneer doesn't have this has wi-fi connection and some people on the forum actually bought these and installed them themselves and they've had zero issues i have been running pioneers for longer than these but they are the same thing. So I trust that this will work just as fine. And I've been saying a lot of these heat pumps look the same, but I've never found identical clones like this. So this is crazy. And especially for the price difference, I think you're saving like 100 or $150. So I hope you liked the video. There was a lot going on and I was super sick for half of it. And I had to redo different segments, but I hope you learned a lot and I hope it helps you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.